Wisdom can be found in many places, sometimes in the most unexpected, like the newspaper. <laughs> Let's talk about it today on the Soul Journey Project. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Kiana. And this is Andrew. And welcome to, to the, the Soul, Soul Journey, Journey Project. Project. Here at the Soul Journey Project, we provide education, inspiration, and motivation on your journey through life. Welcome for another excursion of the Soul Journey Project. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for joining us today. So last week, it was a beautiful fall day. Today, we have a snowstorm, <laughs> a big blizzard here where we live. So, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to roll with the punches and make the best of sometimes a not ideal situation. <laughs> so as Andrew discussed in the intro, we're going to talk about how we were able to find wisdom in an unlikely place like the newspaper. So in our local paper, there was an article. And one thing they referenced at the end of the article was a legend that was shared from an old Cherokee gentleman. So he was talking to his grandson, and this is what he said. An old Cherokee told his grandson a legend about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside of us. One is evil and full of anger, envy, and hate. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, humility, kindness, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought for a minute and asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one I feed. Very good. Yeah, so I wanted to share that with you all. So it's so interesting about this this legend or this story, this parable that uh, the the Cherokee man shared with his grandson is this is not a new concept mm -hmm. within the I will say uh, the wisdom the wisdom teachings, mm -hmm. whether it be Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, whether they be more uh, uh, traditional. Uh, types of, of spiritual backgrounds and things like that, you always find these nuggets, mm -hmm. these themes that are common amongst all the wisdom teachings. This particular story is pointing to something that we've talked about as well. Mm -hmm. You seem to have these two beings, these two minds you know, the uh, angel and yeah, the devil. Yeah, you see it in <laughs> you see it in cartoons, right? And that's yep. how they will mm -hmm. portray it. You have this demon and an angel, and you know which one are you going to listen to? Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately, what this is talking about is, you know, the two different parts of of us, mm -hmm. of of humanity, of mankind. Right. And this is common amongst all human experience, mm -hmm. whether it be ancient times or modern day. The Bible called it the carnal mind and the mind of the spirit. Other traditions may call it, um, you know, the, the ego, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the spiritual mind or whatever. There's so many different ways this has been presented to us mm -hmm. throughout the ages. And it's really dialing deeper down into how we think. Right. And we have one state of mind that will cause us to make one set of decisions that may not be in our best interest long term. And then we have another state of mind that will be leading and guiding us in a way that's more beneficial, not only to us, but to all parties involved. Mm -hmm. And the question is, which one of those minds, which one of those voices are you going to listen to? Yeah. Yeah. And 
one thing we want to really point out is that it's not two minds. It's the same mind, it's all one mind, but it's different ways, different energy or attention, different focus that we put on it, which can be the difference between it being something productive and unproductive, something uplifting and upbuilding and something destructive, right? So it's all about whatever you're deciding to feed. I thought it was a really cool way that the legend described it about two wolves. You know, it's a different, different imagery. And recognizing that whatever you're feeding on is what manifests is what that that's what you're giving life to right because as it said what you give energy to excuse mm -hmm. me what you give attention to mm -hmm. you give energy to mm -hmm. and what you give energy to multiplies and expands so if you are always focusing on the negative things yep. that are happening around you mm -hmm. well you are giving attention and you are giving your energy to that right and so what ends up happening is we get more of the thing we do not want, mm -hmm. even though we know we don't want to experience it. Because we're giving attention to it, there's this the law of reverse effect. So we're giving attention to the negativity. Oh, I can't stand this. Oh, this is so horrible. Man, it's snowing outside. I hate it when it snows, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just going to create more of the same energy within you, mm -hmm. more of the same negative ideas. And it's going to take you down a path of more and more negative thinking and associated negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it starts to snowball, no pun intended, yep. <laughs> into a much larger issue mm -hmm. because you gave attention to it. Yep. So then you wonder why is it why is it so hard to think more positively or why is it so hard to you know that that's a question that many people ask and we've discussed it in a prior video but even in this one it's so hard because that's just what you're focusing on you've been focusing on the negative for so long that your brain has just been conditioned in that way so if you're wanting to shift that focus it's going to take work but it doesn't have to be as difficult as it may seem, it's a very simple process, but you have to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it so that you're feeding the right thing. You have to replace the negative thought or the negative idea mm -hmm. with a positive outcome that you would prefer to experience. Mm -hmm. So now you, you don't just try to jump over to the positive thinking and not acknowledge what is, right? It's inconvenient that it's snowing. Mm -hmm. OK, in end of October. But I can't just keep my mind focused on that. Right. Right now, it's time to shift my focus and say, though it may be snowing outside, I will switch it to things like I'm so thankful that I have a warm home to, to, to live in. Mm -hmm. Right. Or this gives us an opportunity to build a snowman. <laughs> OK, so you, you try to you try to change the narrative. Exactly. You don't try to ignore what is, and we've talked about this in plenty of other videos. You acknowledge that it, it may be inconvenient. But now, instead of focusing on the inconvenience, I'm going to shift it. I'm going to give my energy. I'm going to feed mm -hmm. a more positive thought, mm -hmm. a loving thought, a thought that builds me up and encourages me instead of makes me feel down and dreary and, and depressed. Mm -hmm. Right, and we've discussed your mind being a garden. We've discussed that at prior points. If you think about plants in a garden, if there's one that you're feeding with sunlight and water and good words, because you now people talk to your plants and that does make a difference, right? If you're doing all of that to one plant, but then to another, you're kind of ignoring it, having it be in the shadows when it's meant to be in the light, things like that, that plant's not going to do so hot. Right. So we understand this on a very natural, in a very natural way, but don't carry that over into our own mind. And that's what we really have to get that really what you're thinking matters. It matters. Exactly. It does matter. Uh, significantly matters. Uh, I like the parallel to the garden, uh, because also if you don't 
do something about the weeds that will pop up, mm -hmm. they have a way of taking over your garden. Right. You know, this summer, I spent a lot of time diligently, you know, fertilizing the grass, cutting the grass, treating the grass, doing all kinds of things. But yet, inevitably, weeds will still come. That's just a part of nature. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I had to nip those weeds in the bud early, yeah. quickly. Yeah. Okay, change the narrative. Otherwise, if I sat back and did nothing, if I just gave up and said, oh, to heck with it, the yard would be overrun with weeds in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to feed the positive thoughts, the affirming thoughts, mm -hmm. our intended desire, what we actually want to experience. Right. We may acknowledge what is or the thing that's inconvenient or hard, but we keep our focus and we give energy and attention to what we desire. Mm -hmm. And that is what you will start to experience in your life bit by bit. Right. And there's a saying that I like that says, telling someone what not to do doesn't tell them what to do. Right. So the same with our with our con with our subconscious mind, we can't focus on the things that we don't want because that that gives us nowhere to go. Right. Just like a child, if a child is running in the house, you don't say stop running. What else are they supposed to do? They're, they're going to keep running in a few minutes. Yeah, you'll find <laughs> them running again. Right. Because you haven't given them direction. You haven't given them instruction. Walk. Right. That's a very definite statement that gives them a path to follow or go play with your toys or go yes. play in the other room or, or go sit like down. That. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, if you, you just tell them what not to do. Yep. You didn't actually replace the thought with a new thought. Right. So what's going to come right back to their minds? They stopped for a second because you kind of caught them off guard. Right. Mm -hmm. You got their attention. So in that moment, when you got their attention, that was the opportunity to plant a new idea, mm, a new seed. But you left it at stop running. So they stopped running. They look around for a second. You know, you go on, you leave. And then what did they do? Boom. They're <laughs> off because you didn't actually replace mm -hmm. their train of thought. You didn't change their train of thinking. Right. OK, this is the same with us. Right. But now we have been feeding our negative thoughts for so long if we're adults mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a little bit more effort to change the results in our life mm -hmm. because now we have to reframe you know change the narrative that we've been telling ourselves yep. from weeks months and years mm -hmm. so you have to be consistent with it right so if there is something that you're wanting to replace you have to be very intentional about not just saying, you know, not focusing on, okay, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not, and that's just an easy one. You know, we may use sickness or health or exercise, we may use those a lot because everyone can relate to that, right? So you don't just say, I'm not sick. I'm, yep, I'm not sick, I'm fine, I'm not sick, everything's fine, right? No, that's not how it works. You need to replace that with something affirming. My body, is well every cell is functioning how it's designed to you know th things like that right right but you don't have to ignore what is right right you may you may be diagnosed with cancer or you may have the flu or you know whatever it may be you're experiencing the symptoms mm -hmm. of the sickness can't deny it right okay however I don't have to dwell on that I've acknowledged it the one time mm -hmm. yes I recognize that currently my body is experiencing cancer. Well, I'll just use that one. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to change my thought pattern. I'm going to say, however, my body, as Kiana just said, is operating properly. Every cell mm -hmm. is operating as it was divinely designed to do. Mm -hmm. I am experiencing a progressive, uh, more progressively healthy body day by day. Yeah. Each Something day, like I'm that. getting better and better. Right. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So now moving forward, I'm only focusing on 
every day and in every way my body is getting better and better you make it an affirmation you make it your prayer mm -hmm. whatever you want however you want to frame that yeah. you use that right if you need to write it on a sheet of paper put it on your mirror mm -hmm. in your bathroom put it next to your bed read it before you go to bed read it when you wake up in the morning right now we're changing we're reframing the conversation let exactly. your doctors then at that point manage the cancer not your cancer it's not your cancer don't say that don't ever say that again if you've been saying something like that mm -hmm. stop it stop saying my diabetes mm -hmm. no even my depression right don't claim clients, it for yourself no, the depression right make that separation yeah it's not my diabetes no mm -hmm. that's saying you want it <laughs> if you take an ownership yeah yeah then yeah. why would it leave if you're claiming this is mine right. <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere exactly so stop that okay start claiming health mm -hmm. start claiming that you are better and better yeah right now we live in a time where COVID-19 is a reality regardless of how it came to be there's a lot of theories and a lot of all kind of stuff going on about well how did it get here and who cares it's here mm -hmm. to prevent yourself from experiencing it not only do you need to do the right things in the natural, keeping your immune system up, drinking water, eating healthy, so on, but mentally you have to be in the right space because the mind controls the body. The right. body is an instrument of the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have to make sure your mind is in a place mm -hmm. to perpetuate health. See, prevention is the best remedy. Right. Never having it to begin with mm -hmm. is better than getting something and needing to treat it. Mm -hmm. So to prevent these kinds of things, you train your mind in such a way that health is your default. Mm -hmm. So, I think you get it. <laughs> Thank you, Kiana, for sharing that proverb Mm -hmm. uh, because it is very powerful and I think it's something that we all need to hear more of in these times right right which wolf are you feeding <laughs> exactly. and that's that's your action step to ask yourself which wolf are you feeding are you feeding the wolf full of hate envy despair or are you feeling the wolf feeding the wolf full of love joy patience abundance abundance faith love right that's good yeah so folks again we always appreciate uh appreciate you for joining us today for watching this video thank you so much for those of you who have already subscribed and have mm -hmm. been uh, leaving comments and giving us likes we appreciate that yeah please keep it up please give us a like please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so leave a comment in the comment box that really helps the channel that helps helps get us more uh, uh, exposure exposure through through YouTube mm -hmm. so you know keep helping us out we appreciate that uh, and as always we encourage you to take, take the, the step, step.